biology in essence is the story of life on earth while individual organisms die without fail species continue to live through millions of years unless threatened by natural or anthropogenic extinction there is a large diversity of living organisms on earth all organisms grow and after a definite period of life they perish before death the organisms try to continue their species the organisms produce individuals like themselves the process by which the species is continued is called reproduction my dear learners a very warm welcome to all of you myself dr yashpal sharma and today we will discuss about the process of reproduction and during the discussion we will talk about the types of reproduction and asexual reproduction in detail each and every organism can live only for a certain period of time the period from birth to the natural death of an organism represents a life span life span of a butterfly is about 1 to 2 weeks of crow is about 15 years and that of parrot is about 140 years the life span of crocodile is about 60 years and that of tortoise is about 100 to 150 years can you find out the life span of some common organisms like elephant dog cow horse fruit fly and a banyan tree and arrange them as per their age isn't it both interesting and intriguing to note that it may be as short as few days or as long as few thousand years between these two extreme are the life span of most other living organisms you may note that the life span of organisms are not necessarily correlated with their sizes the size of a crow and a parrot is not very much different yet their life span show a wide difference similarly a mango tree has a much shorter life span as compared to a people tree every organism has a specific average life span it means every organism grow and lives for a particular length of time life span may range from 1 day to 4000 years life span depends upon four stages the juvenility maturity aging and senescence and death juvenility represents the stage when organisms develops the capacity to reproduce maturity marks the start of reproduction the progressive deterioration in a body of a living being is called aging and the terminal irreversible stage of aging is known as senescence in death there is permanent cessation of all vital activities life span of may fly is of one day and of house fly it has a life span of 1 to 4 months lion may live for about 25 years and insects live for few months whatever may be the life span death of every organism is certainty means no individual is immortal except single cell organisms why do we say there is no natural death in a single cell organism given this reality have you ever wondered how vast number of plants and animal species has existed on earth for several thousands of years there must be some process in the living organisms that ensure their continuity yes we are talking about reproduction something that we take for granted reproduction becomes a vital process without which species cannot survive for a long each individual leaves its progeny by asexual or sexual means sexual mode of reproduction enables creation of new variants so that survival advantage is enhanced this unit examines the general principles underlying reproductive processes in living organisms and then explain the details of this process in flowering plants and humans as easy to correlate representative examples all organ systems except reproductive systems help the organisms to remain alive under different conditions of environment 
reproduction is defined as a biological process in which all organisms give rise to young ones that is offspring similar to itself the offspring grows mature and in turn reproduce new offspring thus there is a cycle of birth growth and death reproduction enables the continuity of the species generation after generation there is a large diversity in the biological world as each organism has evolved its own mechanism to multiply and produce offspring the organism's habitat its internal physiology and several other factors are collectively responsible for how it reproduces based on whether there is a participation of one organism or two organism in the process of reproduction the reproduction is of two types when offspring produced by a single parent with or without the involvement of gamete formation the reproduction is called asexual reproduction and when two parents of opposite sex participate in reproductive process and also involve fusion of male and female gametes it is called sexual reproduction asexual reproduction is a type of reproduction by which offspring arise from a single organism and inherit the genes of the parent only it does not involve the fusion of gametes and almost never changes the number of chromosomes asexual reproduction is the primary form of reproduction for single celled organisms for example the archaea bacteria eu bacteria and protists many plants and fungi reproduces asexually as well any reproductive process that does not involve meiosis or syngamy is said to be asexual or vegetative the absence of syngamy means that such an event can occur in the sporophyte generation or the gametophyte stage because of the lack of new genetic material an organisms clone itself through this process and makes genetically identical organisms this can be advantageous in some circumstances what deleterious in others depending on how the makeup of the plant suits its ecosystem there are a few major ways in which plants asexually reproduce in their life cycle to secure future generations in this method a single individual that is parent is capable of producing offspring as a result the offspring that are produce are not only identical to one another what are also exact copies of their parents are these offsprings likely to be genetically identical or different can you answer that question the term clone is used to describe such morphologically and genetically similar individuals now comes to the type of asexual reproduction asexual reproduction includes fusion budding vegetative reproduction sporogenesis fragmentation and agamogenesis that includes parthenogenesis and apomixis now comes to the fission fission is the division of a cell or a body into two or more parts and regeneration of these parts into separate cells that is bodies population or species fission may be binary fission or multiple fission binary fission mean division into half is a kind of sexual reproduction it is the most common form of reproduction in prokaryotes and occurs in some single celled eukaryotes in which organisms divided into two equal halves multiple fission at the cellular level occurs in many protists for example sporozoans and algae the nucleus of the parent cell is divided into several times by mitosis producing several nuclei the cytoplasm then separates creating multiple daughter cells now comes to the budding budding is a form of asexual reproduction in which new organisms develop from an outgrowth or bud due to cell division at one particular site the new organism remains attached as it grows separating from the parent organism 
only when it is mature, leaving behind the scare tissue. Since the reproduction is asexual, the newly created organism is a clone and is genetically identical to the parent organism. Organisms such as Hydra use regenerative cells for reproduction in the process of budding. In Hydra, a bud develops as an outgrowth due to repeated cell division at one specific site. These buds develop into tiny individuals and when fully mature, detach from the parent body and become new independent individuals. Vegetative reproduction. Vegetative reproduction, also known as vegetative propagation or vegetative multiplication or vegetative cloning. It is a form of asexual reproduction in plants. It is a process by which new organisms arise without the production of seeds or spores. It can occur naturally or introduced by horticulturists. Vegetative reproduction includes runners. Runners are stems that grows horizontally above the ground. They have nodes where words are formed. These words grow into a new plant, for example, strawberry runners. Bulb, a bulb is a modified shoot, is a short stem with fleshy leaves or leaf bases that function as storage food organs during dormancy. A bulb's leaf bases, also known as scales, generally do not support leaves, what contains food reserves to enable the plant to survive adverse weather conditions. At the center of the world is a vegetative growing point or an unexpanded flowering shoot. The base is formed by a stem and plant growth occurs from this basal plate. Roots emerge from the underside of the base and new stems and leaves from the upper side. Com. A com is also known as bulbotubular is a short vertical swollen underground plant stem that serves as a food storage organ used by some plants to survive winter and other adverse conditions such as summer, drought and heat. Combs are not made up of leaves, but a vertical swollen compact stem and as such are solids. The comb is protected by a tunic of old leaf petioles, rhizome. The rhizome is a modified underground stem serving as an organ of vegetative reproduction, for example, polypodium, also known as polypody, iris, couch grass, and nettles. If a rhizome is separated into pieces, each piece may be able to give rise to a new plant. The plant uses the rhizome to store starches, proteins, and other nutrients. Tubers. A tuber is a short, thick, round stem that is a part of certain plants, such as potato, that grows underground and that can be produced into a new plant. Tubers are enlarged structures in some plant species used as storage organs for nutrients. They are used for plants perination, that is survival of winter or dry months, to provide energy and nutrients for regrowth during the next growing session and as a mean of asexual reproduction. They may be stem tubers as potato or root tubers as wheat potatoes. Now comes to the spores. A spore is a unit of asexual reproduction that may be adapted for dispersal and for survival often for extended period of time in unfavorable conditions. Spores form part of life cycle of many plants, algae, fungi, and protozoa. Now comes to the fragmentation, a form of asexual reproduction wherein a parent organisms break into different fragments, each capable of growing independently into a new organism. Fragmentation, also known as splitting, is a method of reproduction is seen in many organisms such as filamentous cyanobacteria, molds, lichens, many plants and animals such as sponges, acyl, flat worms, some annelid worms and sea stars. Now comes to the agamogenesis. Agamogenesis is a form of reproduction that does not involve a male gamete, for example, parthenogenesis and apomixis. 
Parthenogenesis is a type of asexual reproduction in which the offspring develop from unfertilized eggs. It is particularly common in arthropods and rotifers, can also be found in some species of fishes, amphibians, birds and reptiles, but not in mammals. Parthenogenetic development also occur in some plant species such as roses and orange trees. Now comes to the apomixis. The development of an embryo without the occurrence of fertilization, especially in plants. Apomixis is an asexual mode of seed formation that produces clonal progeny with a maternal genotype. It primarily influences reproductive events in the ovule of the flower. Apomixis, that is asexual seed formation, is the result of a plant gaining the ability to bypass the most fundamental aspect of sexual reproduction, that is meiosis and fertilization. Let us see how widespread asexual reproduction is among different groups of organisms. Asexual reproduction is common among single celled organisms and in plants and animals with relatively simple organizations. In protistas and monirans, the organisms are the parent cell divided into two to give rise to new individuals. Thus, in these organisms, the cell division is itself is a mode of reproduction. Many single celled organisms reproduce by binary fission, where a cell divides into two halves, each rapidly grows into an adult, for example, in amoeba and in paramecium. In yeast, the division is unequal and small birds are produced that remain attached initially to the parent cell, which eventually gets separated and mature into a new yeast organisms, that is cells. Members of the kingdom fungi and simple plants such as algae reproduces through special asexual reproductive structures. The most common of these structures are eusepores that usually are microscopic motile structures. Other common asexual reproductive structures are conidia which is present in penicillium, birds in hydra and gamules in sponges. The most common form of asexual reproduction in plants is called vegetative propagation that includes whorl, comb, rhizome, stolen runner and tubers. In animal kingdom, asexual reproduction occurs only in relatively unspecialized animal. Members of these animal phylum, cnidaria, can undergo budding, for example, hydra. Another form of asexual reproduction is fragmentation. Now comes to the cloning in animals. Cloning is the production of many genetically identical copies of an individual by asexual reproduction. It may occur naturally, but techniques have been developed which allow the process to be carried out artificially. The first successful cloning of a vertebrate was carried out in the late 1960s by Dr. J. Gordon at Oxford University. The process does not naturally occur in vertebrate. What? By taking a cell from the intestine or skin of a frog and introducing its nucleus into an egg cell whose own nucleus had been destroyed by ultraviolet radiation, he was able to grow tadpole, which in turn grew into a frog identical to the parent from which the nucleus was transplanted. Research in Scotland in 1996 led to the successful cloning of a ship dolly from a cell taken from parent's udder. You must have heard about the scourges of the water bodies or about the terror of Bengal. This is nothing but the aquatic plant water hyacinth, which is one of the most invasive weed species found growing wherever water is standing. It drains oxygen from the water, what leads to death of fishes. You may find it interesting to know that this plant was introduced in India because of its beautiful flowers and shape of leaves. Since 
it can propagate vegetatively at a phenomenal rate and spread all over the water body in a short period of time, it is very difficult to get rid of them. Are you aware how plants like potato, sugar cane, banana, ginger, daila are cultivated? Have you seen small plants emerging from the buds of the potato tuber from the rhizomes of the banana and ginger? When you carefully try to determine the site of origin of a new plant plantlets in the plants listed above, you will notice that they invariably arise from the nodes present in the modified stems of these plants. When the nodes come into contact with damp soil or water, they produce roots and new plants. Similarly, adventitious birds arise from the notches present at margins of leaves of bryophyllum. This ability is fully exploited by gardeners and farmers for commercial propagation of such plants. It is interesting to note that asexual reproduction is the common method of reproduction in organisms that have a relatively simple organizations like algae and fungi and they shift to sexual method of reproduction just before the onset of adverse conditions. Find out how sexual reproduction enables these organisms to survive during unfavorable conditions. Why is sexual reproduction favored under such conditions? Asexual that is vegetative as well as sexual mode of reproduction are exhibited by the higher plants. On the other hand, only sexual mode of reproduction is present in most of the animals. Now comes to the advantages and disadvantages of asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction can be advantageous or disadvantageous. One positive aspect is that it can create individuals rapidly and in large quantities. Secondly, bypassing the sexual process can help a plant in times of dryness since motile sperms require water to fertilize the egg. Another advantage lies in the fact that plants with desired characteristics can be cloned for economic reasons that is in agriculture. However, if something goes wrong such as occurrence of a fatal mutation, the whole society of these clones can be terminated. For this reason, farmers are careful in determining how to propagate their vegetation. Now comes to the advantages of asexual reproduction. Only one parent is required. Finding a mate can be very difficult for organisms that are in desolate environments like the deep ocean. Asexual reproduction takes the need to find a mate away, allowing these organisms to multiply. Second, genetically identical offsprings. If organism is well adapted to its environment, the fact that offsprings are genetically identical may be an advantage. Successful combination of these genes are preserved. The third, dispersal and spread. The common method of asexual reproduction often enables dispersal of species. For example, penicillium and mucor are common molds which spread rapidly by means of asexually produced spores which are light and easily dispersed by air currents. This enables the fungi to find fresh source of food. Plants that produce rhizomes such as sea couch grass in sand dunes, bracken and spiratina that is cord grass in mud flats spread rapidly by this mean. Fourth, rapid multiplication. Bacteria can divide as often as once every 20 minutes, allowing number to build up very rapidly. Many parasites rely on one or more asexual stages where rapid multiplication compensates for large losses at other stages in the life cycle. The malaria parasite, tapeworm and other liver flukes are good examples. Fifth, better chances of survival will be at hand. With a large number of organisms, species would still survive even when conditions change 
and the number of predators varies. Now comes to the disadvantage of asexual reproduction. The first, no diversity. Since the traits of only one parent are passed on, all the offsprings are exactly identical. This causes for a very big lack of diversity among the population of these organisms. Second, prone to extinction. All of the same traits also mean all of the same weaknesses. Parasites and other predators that have evolved to kill just one of the organisms can take out the entire population. Third, it risks issue on inheritance. Often, it requires a single asexual parent from which the chromosomes and genes are copied. This means the genetic mutations are defects which could be bred out in asexual reproduction would be present in the offsprings with no exception. Fourth, there might be risk of food and space competition. Some asexual reproduction methods are producing offsprings that are just close together. So, there is a big possibility that they would compete for food and space. Fifth, there might be problems with crowding. Asexual reproducing organisms would usually lead to the struggle for existence and overcrowding within the community. So, my dear learners, reproduction enables a species to live generation after generations. Reproduction in organisms can be broadly classified into asexual and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction does not involve the formation of fusion of gametes. It is common in organisms that have a relatively simple organization such as the fungi, algae and some invertebrate animals. The offsprings formed by the asexual reproduction are identical and are referred to as clones. Juice conidia, etc. are the most common asexual structures formed in several algae and fungi. Budding and gemule formation are the common asexual methods seen in animals. Prokaryotes and unicellular organisms reproduce asexually by cell division or binary fission of the parent cell. In several aquatic and terrestrial species of angiosperms, structures such as runners, rhizomes, suckers, tubers, offsets, etc. are capable of giving rise to a new offspring. This method of asexual reproduction is generally referred to as vegetative propagation. Asexual reproduction is fairly distinct from sexual reproduction in a way that it does not need two separate parents and special cell to reproduce, which means that it does not require special mechanisms that combine sex cells and allow fertilization. It simply uses mitosis, which results to copying the parent organisms. Most plants are thought to undergo this type of reproduction. What? You need to know that there are also animals that reproduce asexually. So, my dear learners, in this discussion, we have talked about the reproduction generally and then types of reproduction and asexual reproduction in details. In the next discussion, we will talk about the sexual reproduction and we will take the reproduction of human as the best examples. Thank you.